Hey players, how you doing? Welcome back to Player's Guide. On this episode of Player's Guide, I have discovered and will be covering another video rental store. This one is in the heart of Toronto, Ontario. It's called Bay Street Video. You may have heard of it, and as far as I know, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below, this is the last video rental store in Toronto. There are very few video rental stores left. I've tried to catch as many of them as I can before they shut down, or if they're still doing fairly well, so you could find out about them and go support these stores so that they don't go away. Now, if you know of any video stores you'd like to see me cover, please let me know in the comments below. Um, soon as the borders open, I will be going over and venturing around in the States, but for now, I'm re restricted to Ontario, Canada for the time being, um, but watch for some other video stores and don't be afraid to let me know about some interesting ones because I might just be able to cover them. So as you can see here, this is a smaller video store right downtown Toronto, uh, right on Bay Street in a small plaza, just a stone's throw away from Bay Station. Because of the limited space, you can see that they have these very thin DVD cases that you can flip through to see the covers and find out more about what different movies they have here to offer amongst the different categories. So I have a short interview here with the manager of the store. Bay Street Video. Uh, we opened uh, in 1993, but the video store was here much earlier than that. It used to be Mr. Video before that, but the ownership changed and we became Bay Street Video. Wow. Well, I mean, back in the 90s when I, when I first uh, was here. I mean, that was around the time that, uh, you know, DVD was really just starting to take off. So, you know, in the 90s, like, it was just, it was a booming business back then. You know, rentals were really, really popular back then, right? This is like before streaming, right? So the actual, you know, going to the video store and picking out a movie was very, very much part of everyone's everyday life. There was a transition in, in the 90s again. Rentals were really, really popular. But when DVD came around, I know there was something about it, you know, there was, you know, the, the bonus material, because there was that period where there were laser discs and Criterion basically, you know, invented the idea of putting on you know, right. supplemental right. material, you know, like audio commentaries and, you know, documentaries and all that kind of thing. And when DVD came out, you know, DVDs continued that trend and, and included those types of things and things were shown in widescreen which for the most part didn't really happen before on, on videotape so I don't know it just around that time there was there was a change how people viewed physical media it wasn't just something that you could go on a Friday night and pick up it was something that you wanted to own and I think that's when people really started to, to build collections because the editions that were coming out were chock full of stuff it was like film school right like companies like Criterion like really really changed what a, a movie rental could be but then I, I moved away <laughs> and then I, I came back and when I came back you know that's when kind of streaming was was kind of starting and rentals were definitely going down sales were going down the industry on the whole was, was kind of on the downturn um, the store was doing okay, but we were definitely you know, trending downward. But something happened along the way, and I think a lot of it has to do with like the smaller kind of boutique uh, companies like Arrow, Show Factory, Kino. They really, really embraced physical media, and they started putting up more titles than ever before. And this is a dying industry that's been around forever, but now they're putting up more titles. And, and they were kind of following that criterion model of let's just try to make it the nicest possible edition. We'll, we'll restore it, we'll put a lot of bonus material, but the, the kind of titles that we're focusing on were kind of more cultish stuff, a lot of horror, where Criterion was a little bit more highbrow. And I don't know, people started coming out of the woodwork and collectors, once again, kind of revived the industry, where just like people were just eating all these things up. 
and now, I mean, we're, we're flourishing. I mean, you know, obviously the pandemic um, made things a little difficult, but once we reopened the doors, people were just like, itching to get in here, just to get their hands on all of these things. So sales, I think, are like bigger than ever before. I think the, the biggest difference for us, in my own opinion, everyone has their own opinions, like why, why you guys? Like, why did you survive? And I think the, the biggest decision that the, that the owners ever made was to decide to rent and to sell. Because I, I, all these other places that I see that have come and gone, they were pretty much one or the other. You know, like all these rental places, like a Blockbuster or whatever, that kind of, you know, jumbo video, whatever. They were predominantly rental focused. And then on the other side, you had places like H&B, which only sold. So, you know, as, as the industry kind of changes, you know, and there's ebbs and flows to how things go, you don't have something else to, to fall back on. So if, you know, sales go down, Maybe the rentals go up, but if rentals go down, maybe the sales go up. And as other stores are closing, you start attracting the people that go to both of those places. So even though the industry on the whole isn't as strong as it once was, it's kind of benefited us because you get all the people that would frequent the rental places and all the people that would frequent the sale places. And from day one, we've always just tried to have as much as possible.